war to be in pictures. You're I got the wrong side. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh-uh. Welcome to Takis. Let us pull back our hoods <laughs> and talk about Death Wish. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Do we have to? Uh. <laughs> well, if that didn't spoil it. I wore we wore hoods in mourning for the two hours that died today. <laughs> out of out of the one percent of respect that we can give to Death Wish. Which is the hood. That's it. Wrapping that's, the hood. That's it. Mm. As always, today's Two. episode brought to you by Guayaki Yerba Mate, fine purveyors of delicious, energizing drinks made from organic Yerba Mate. Come to life. Come to life. <sighs> Caffeine, Today, am I right? <laughs> Caffeine, you am I right? right? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so today was one of those opportunities to see a movie that, uh, well, wasn't good. Once again, yeah. Once again. Um, we saw Death Wish, directed by Eli Roth. Yeah. Who we all know as the great filmmaker. Uh, mm. Sorry. Filmmaker? Eli Roth brought <laughs> us uh, Hostel. Yeah. Brought us, uh, what, didn't he do a... Did he do one of the Grindhouse movies? Uh, no, he no. didn't. No, what else did he do? He's in the Inglorious Bastards. Yes, he's, he in it. is. Yeah. <laughs> he actually is great in it, He too. is fantastic. He plays the Jew bear. Yeah, he's great in that. Um, he also did that clown movie where the dude becomes a clown. I saw a, it's a comically bad trailer. It's a bad movie. Mm. Like It's <laughs> so bad. Uh, the Green Inferno is Green another Inferno. Uh, film of his that I saw recently. That was just not entertaining. Um, And for me, that's what I kept coming back to while watching Death Wish is I just want this movie to be something. It's not funny. They could have made it funny. They had lots of opportunities. It wasn't suspenseful. They could have made it suspenseful. It could have been a, a thriller could have even been like an action, all-out action gore. It could have mm-hmm. been a gore fest. Yeah. They really didn't do any of those things. It was like they tiptoed into <laughs> each of those, but never went, never committed yeah. to what this movie is, and therefore that we were left with just blah. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. There, There's like, there's a few moments where like it comes very... It actually hits a really good spot for like maybe ten seconds. <laughs> like one <laughs> single bad. event is like, wow, that was kind of awesome. I wish the whole movie was uh, like this. <laughs> but it's just like, and especially with Eli Roth because Eli Roth is a director that I do think of, even though I don't like any of his movies, I still think of him as having his own kind of take on things and having his own style. Um, and I, I was, for some reason, I feel like this, like, I really want him to do better than what he is. Like, I see a potential in yeah. the movies he's trying to make, these, like, grindhouse, really, like, slummy gore kind of stuff. But he just doesn't quite reach it. I don't know what what's the deal with that. I didn't feel any sense of style in this film at all. Not, yeah. not that films have to be stylized. Unless but. the style is ACDC's Back in Black. <laughs> Which, which that was song heavily, in here. <laughs> heavily yeah. used in this yeah. movie. Like, lay off this poor song, guys. It's dead. Um, it needed the, more Beach Boys. Yeah. There's a Beach Boys song in it. That was great. The short synopsis is a family man becomes a vigilante killing machine when his family is violently attacked by robbers. Violently. And so, like, the beginning of this movie, like, the first... All the setup stuff is very, very um Remember, this functional. is the non-spoiler section. Oh, jeez. Here, you know Holy what? I can moly. rate this movie real quick. Um, you guys know that scene in Avatar where uh, the robots are fighting at the very end, and then their guns somehow become disengaged or something, and so he pulls out that giant knife? Mm-hmm. That's what this movie felt like. <laughs> felt like that. <laughs> like a robot pulling out a knife mm-hmm. to fight? Yeah. 
like, are you serious? Like, make like, stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Not they're not giving a nod at it or anything. It's just uh, this is happening. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, there were plenty of moments like that where it was like, really, that's what we're doing. But there were also just so many moments that were just like, uh, why do I care? Why why should I feel like watching you yeah. at this moment? Yeah. I don't believe what you're saying, moments. <laughs> you sound like you're speaking words that were written, moments. <laughs> Bruce Willis does the best of being such a great actor at just speaking words. Yeah, but he had some bad dialogue to work with. Yeah, terrible motivation, yeah. terrible dialogue, terrible character. He had yeah. an emotional scene where he had to like let tears yeah. flow, and he nailed it, right? Yeah. It's because he's Bruce Willis. <laughs> he's Bruce and Willis. just <laughs> like, look at that. He's doing this beautiful emotional acting but then he follows it up with saying these words that are just unbelievable coming out of a human's mouth. <laughs> right. If you're, if if people in your real life spoke to you the way these characters <laughs> spoke to each other, you would start poking them to see if they're like a a pod person or a, 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 robot. a, a robot. You know, <laughs> they're like inside of some you, autopilot. You check their meds. Shell. You'd be like, "Are you all right? <laughs> people don't talk that way." Then now, all just being fair, writing good believable dialogue is freaking hard yeah it is really really hard yeah but you know th- this this is hollywood here right this is a big budget movie give me some freaking believable dialogue something something yeah. at least They're, they had actually pretty good uh i don't know what it is i guess environment is what it was because like the whole beginning scene I won't spoil it too much, but they when they're talking about the family and everything, they're introducing all the characters and everything. Um, the way they acted around each other felt pretty real. It felt pretty good until you found until you saw the movie lines coming in, and you're like, oh, okay, this is a uh, oh, that's happening for this reason. Oh, that's why you're doing that. Oh, that's why you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this movie was predictable. Yeah, the whole movie like is telecasting. The, like Everything. they keep al- alluding to the concept of w- oh he's a renegade for the whole thing even when he is like a renegade it feels like they're still alluding to like when he's gonna become one hey, he's gonna be a renegade soon sometime <laughs> they literally like focused the camera on everything that was about to happen like if there if if there was a fight scene and some some object was about to be used in a fight, they would zoom in on it before it was grabbed. Yeah. Like the scene before. So you already know, okay, she's clearly going to whack that person with that pot. <laughs> right. Otherwise, why are we staring at it for a few seconds before the fight begins? It was over and over like that. Yeah. 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 It got, it, because of that, it, it got um, really tedious a lot of the times. And also, it made the movie feel very long it did how long is this movie because because i couldn't give an honest guess like i wouldn't be surprised if it was like an hour and a half the first but it was act, just horribly paced well i do have the it was horribly paced. but dude you're in a bad movie if you look at the time that's what i was yeah. doing yeah i did that uh <laughs> because i was curious because i was fe- i felt oh we've just okay we've just finished what was clearly the first act and I feel like it was 45 minutes long, right? which is way too long. <laughs> um, hour 47 is how long that movie 40, was. Oh, yeah. It feels longer than that. It oh, feels it like a two and a half two hour, hour movie. Plus. Two hours, yeah. Jeez, yeah. It was a slog. Yeah. It was a slog. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what I think all of us were hoping for in this film was something that can be really, really stupid, but really great at being stupid. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly you know? what I wanted. And uh, there's a few, f- few films that even have the same setup, uh, like Shoot 'em Up, um, what, Taken, mm-hmm. you know, have, have almost the exact same setup, and or Law Abiding Citizen. <laughs> yeah. Like, these are all stupid films that are so good at yeah. being stupid. And Death Wish was not good at being stupid. No. It was bad it, <laughs> yeah. at just being bad. <laughs> well, It was like, good at being bad. Bad at being good. Like what Kenny was saying is they, they didn't really commit to one genre, you know. Like from from Eli Roth, what I was expecting was I was expecting something that was really over the top violent with lots and lots of bloodshed. And you see all for. this yeah. gore, yeah. And yeah. you and it's just really campy and like tasteless. Right. Yeah. But they were switching between like 
a detective thing and like a thriller thing and like a suspense thing. It was thing. almost yeah. like Eli Roth was trying to be taken more seriously. Yeah. That's what was weird. That's so, what was weird. Yeah, it's like, it's okay, not... it's Eli Roth. This is going to be some like over the top blood fest. And he's like, no. You know? And, he, and he picks this film to do that with? Yeah, I know. Death Wish. See, I was actually was looking forward to this movie like when it was coming out because I thought Eli Roth and this property was like a match made in heaven. But now I'm starting to think that E.I. Roth, I just don't like his movies. <laughs> <Maybe laughs> Even though it. I haven't liked all of his other movies. Maybe that's it. Surprise! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am dying to get into all of the ridiculousness of this film, which would qualify as spoiler content. So can, can, can we just end the non-spoiler section? And, let's end it. And yeah. let's just jump to the... Move on with our lives. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers. So let's, so let's just say... Uh, I'll, I'll give my two cents before we jump to this, the spoiler-filled section. Um, this movie, uh, in my cigarette rating system, <laughs> is a, uh, well, an hour 47 <laughs> if we go by the seven minutes <laughs> per pack. Supposedly you lose seven minutes of your life for every pack of cigarettes you smoke. So I equate wasted life with a pack of cigarettes. So... This is somewhere between 10 and 20 packs, packs of cigarettes <laughs> that I've metaphorically smoked today. Oh, my gosh, dude. You have so, a problem. So would I recommend anyone e- – would I recommend to even my worst enemy that they smoke 20 packs of cigarettes in a day? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I do not recommend this movie to you. This movie was, was a bad movie. <laughs> this movie was tired. I was, uh, I was sitting there in the chair, and I was, like, w- wanting to fall asleep. And I was like, no, keep paying attention. And then I wanted to walk out, and I'm like, no, we got to stay here. <laughs> Do you so, want it to walk yeah, out? Yeah, and I never want to walk out of movies, so, yeah, I would rate it. Don't see it. Well, um, watch Taken instead. Taken that's, is That's a stupid quite, movie that's good. Quite a good movie. Um, I couldn't recommend it. Um, there are moments – there are a few brief, brief, brief moments that make it slightly better than Winchester – in terms of redeemability, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I, I couldn't honestly tell anybody to go watch it. All right. Well, there you've heard it. We're going to move to the spoiler-filled section now. So if you're hoping to see this movie and not have it spoiled, first of all, my condolences. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, uh, you may want to stop the program until, until you see the movie. Uh, otherwise, let's jump into it. Spoilers begin in five, four, three, two, one. Sylvester Stallone's character Rocky actually loses at the end. Oh, he loses. What? He has Jeez. his hands up, and you think he's won, but he what? actually it was a personal victory because oh, he geez. made it. He wasn't knocked out. That's actually, but he really lost. That's beautiful, actually. It is. That's actually quite nice. Let's go home on that note. Yeah. yeah. Let's Ooh, actually watch right. Rocky now. Guys, <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's this movie. So, uh, first thing that I hate about movies like this, right? As you see this, I've seen this so many times now. The so the break in happens. The whole movie's built around the fact that there's this break in that ends up with his wife being murdered. And his daughter hospitalized and put into a coma. There's no reason that break-in had to turn violent. Yeah, it's yeah. actually all the daughter's fault. The daughter In- did not completely. have to grab a knife and slap. Like the mom even said, "Just do what they say. Let's just just go along with it." And as soon as they showed this like broadcasted close-up on the knife, you're like, "Okay, you're she's like, obviously going to grab the knife right. and screw this up, and the mom's going to get killed." Uh, but all they had to do is just open the safe, give them the stuff, let them leave. Life is fine. <laughs> but of course, the daughter is is this like super brave hero who fights men with guns <laughs> with a knife. There's, I, there's I was, so much wrong with this. I was wondering if um, when she woke up from her coma at the end, if Bruce Willis was going to go up and be like, "You killed your mom. <laughs> your actions <laughs> resulted in your mom's death." <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. And like, so first I, and I saw that coming, yep. you know, and I'm like, okay, they're cooperating. And now they've shown me this knife. So I'm like, oh gosh, she's going to fight back. 
And then I thought, oh, I see what's going to happen. The guy's going to be um, trying to rape her or something. Right. They're trying to abuse her. And it looked like they were going that way. They were, he's, yeah. He's, like, starting to he's touch like her. He's, like, getting handsy on her. She's yeah. freaking out. But then the other <laughs> the other th- thief comes in and stops him. Right. You know? They, they and, made these thieves out to be, like, like honorable thieves that were like, we're not going to hurt you. Just just do what you want. Do what we are asking and you'll be fine. And like, hey, no, we're not playing games to the dude who's kind of acting up. But Yeah. But then so, like, the guy like, is, like, know. he's, like, getting handsy on yeah. him. And not, and not too handsy, actually. Mm. He's actually just kind of being creepy about it. Right? Yeah, very creepy. And and uh, and then the other guy says stop. And he goes, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then the daughter attacks him <laughs> yeah. while the guard is down. <laughs> yeah. And then and, uh, they both get killed. And I, you knew for a full five minutes that one of them was getting boiling water thrown in their face. Which the only question was, <laughs> whose face was it going to go into? Which yeah. the, the boiling water. She took the pot off of the with the that stove, yeah. so it wasn't holder. boiling anymore. Right, but they gave it a oh. good close up. They did know? in she the beginning. She pulled it off yeah. and she puts it down, and it's like there's obviously a pot of boiling water here. And so there was another mm, so many stupid things. I want to start from the very beginning, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the opening scene, which had really bad extras in it, was... When they're at the hospital? Yeah, they're rushing some guy's uh, cop. cop's partner into into the care. And, like, the cops loosen it, and the people who are rushing <laughs> look like they're trying to not bump the camera in front of them. So, like, the girl's, like, <laughs> doing this. <laughs> she keeps putting herself back. Weird, weird, weird sequence, and then so they yeah. end with uh, with the guy coming in, or with uh, Bruce Willis coming in, not being able to save the guy, and then the guy's killer is in the same building, and he gets run up, and uh, and then so he goes to the cop, says, "Sorry, your friend's dead," and then he gets called to go save the killer, and I was yeah. like, "That's awesome," and then he's he's like, so "Now you're gonna go save him," and he says, "If, if I can," and then they cut, smash cut from there to uh, well, the title that was they right, 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 title so. Was that supposed to be theming? Because that never, ever came back. Never paid off. Yeah. yeah. That's what it kind of felt like. Like, right. oh, they're setting something up here. Especially with all the telecasting and that it, they yeah. did everywhere and it, else. And it felt like, oh, that cop's going right. to come into play. He's going to so come into play later. It, it is no no connection whatsoever. <laughs> Zero. Also, that that cop, like, oh, so overacted that scene. <laughs> when they're, when he's rushing his partner in and he's dying. Like, he's just going, oh, God, <laughs> hang in there, buddy. You can do it. Don't die. Don't die. <laughs> and another thing is, like, he's rushing him into, like, okay, so if the, if the partner, he was pretty shot up, right? Like, because they because he lost a ton of blood and that's why he died, right? Why did he get so shot up and then he puts him inside the car and then drives him as opposed to, like, I'm guessing an ambulance would have been at the scene <laughs> at a gunfight. I don't know. Well, why do you need an ambulance if your car already has sirens? I see. That's the only difference. <laughs> so, I'm, yeah, the guy should have waited for an ambulance, which is equipped to patch him up. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. Stupid. Um, that line you mentioned where he goes, like, oh, and you're going to go save that guy who did this to my partner? And then Bruce Willis is like, I'll try that's what I'm planning to do, or I'll do that. If I, yeah. can. If I can. If I can, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. That's a cool dynamic. That'd be cool for a movie. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's too bad they didn't do it's anything. Yeah. It's not in this movie. Yeah. It's not this movie. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also love that when it <laughs> – when he started thinking about becoming a uh, vigilante crime fighter, there's a phase where he's just mulling this over in his head, and then uh, a uh, a criminal is brought into the ER with wounds, and when they put him up on the gurney, a gun <laughs> he drops a gun, a gun <laughs> falls out of his pocket, a Glock. We all out, audibly laughed. Falls yeah. out of his pocket onto the ground, and no one notices it. And Bruce Willis kicks it under the table. And then somehow, <laughs> in this room, they roll him out. Now, remember, the gun's there the gun's under there the, the table. Ground, yeah. They roll him out, which I guess would expose the gun. Yes. There's like 20 other people in there. He has picked up the gun and is putting it in his pocket when he leaves. In his scrubs. In yeah, his scrubs. Right? <laughs> and no one notices. No one notices. This is how he gets his like, gun. Like the guy who's shot rolls in on a gurney and the gun's with him the entire yeah. time. Yeah. Like, yeah. They put him into the ambulance. He must have had the gun on him then too. And yeah. Bruce Willis is the only one who notices it. Yeah, all. like they've never, they, they never disarmed the guy 
who just got shot in a gunfight. <laughs> Did you and, notice also every single bad guy in here, bad guy? They even call them bad guys. They yeah. Do. Every single one had a tattoo. Oh, yeah. 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 Because that's what bad was, guys have. The, you, you've you noticed that most of the bad guys in here, or the, so they had, they had, a lot, a lot of times with these kinds of movies, at least with old ones, it's easy to put gangsters as people in the ghetto or just black people in general. And they made sure to have black people on both sides, mm-hmm. which is, I guess, I don't know, it's a cop show thing, I feel like. Um, but it seemed like they're like, okay, see, black people are on both sides. We're all good. And then they had Mexicans only as the gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, God. You only got to cover yourself for one race. <laughs> for just yeah, one. You're good yeah. To yeah go. there's white and then other. <laughs> and other, right. So they had other, tattooed other. Uh, oh. to, to leapfrog for a second, yeah. back to the gun scene. Yeah, yeah. What also made that absurd was that it, it followed directly after the scene where Bruce Willis goes in to, to attempt to buy a gun and the lady explains all the paperwork and stuff you got to do. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll think about it and then come back. The next scene is a gun falls. A gun into his fall. Lap. Yeah, he literally takes it. He's like, oh, right. I'll take it. And, and the woman at the gun shop had just explained to him that any any bullet fired from a gun he buys would be traceable back to him. Yes. Right. right? Yeah. So he's like, well, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing a criminal brought me a gun in the <laughs> ER. <laughs> so you know? ridiculous. There, in in the beginning, where they're at, uh, I'm going to go back even more to uh, to the part where they're celebrating her getting into the college or whatever she was. Um, and she's hanging out with her uncle, who I have a... There's a big thing I want to talk about with him. Mm. But um, she's hanging out with her uncle, and she, like, puts him in a headlock or something because yeah. they that talked was, about... Yeah, they set up that she ready. knows martial arts, yeah. and then they never... And never, yeah, ever came Never back. becomes a thing. And, like, I, when... They have a whole dialogue bit <laughs> about how she trains all the time to be a tough fighter. Like, she's like her dad. Yeah. And I was like, oh, are they going to go stupid, like... He's gonna become a vigilante, and then she's gonna become his sidekick. You know that would be that's weird. in a sequel, but 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 it doesn't do it, and she just totally loses. <sighs> also, that headlock she does on her uncle looked silly. It was just like she's like just yeah. like like as almost that, like a hug. That's like what an uncle yeah. does to a niece to give her. <laughs> yeah, it was a noogie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, but they played it off like it was like. Some impressive march, martial arts thing, yeah. which yeah. was yeah, really the funny. Sound effects too. Yeah. <laughs> the the pizza place they were at. This is a small detail, and I just want to put it out there. The pizza place they were at. They showed the pizza that they were uh, eating at the time. Yeah, Chicago and, style, of course. Mm, yeah, and it was supposed to be uh, looking as if they've been there for a while. Therefore, there's pieces of pizza missing. But the pizza was cold. <laughs> there was no. There was no anything dripping off the pizza. It was perfectly yeah. little slices. It's like obviously a three-hour-old pizza <laughs> or more. <laughs> that is like because they were because they because Bruce Willis I think took one of the pieces off and it was just like it was like this. It was like <laughs> yeah, and if you've ever had deep like dish, a, you know that's impossible. Deep, deep dish yeah. is like like lasagna, yeah. Yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, and that looked like cardboard. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it was a prop. Maybe it was fake. So funny. <laughs> it did so make stupid. me want some deep dish pizza, though. It did, yeah. Dude, the, the dialogue in the first act where they had all this exposition and they're trying desperately to uh, to character develop, yeah. which, by the way, failed because you, you didn't terrible. feel a thing when people died. No. Like, I, I felt nothing when his wife died. I didn't feel sad because I, I never got connected. There wasn't a, a, a no. successful development. But then they waste a whole scene – at this uh, fake soccer game, right? Oh, so, I know. This scene was so weird. <laughs> I forgot about that right, scene. So first of all, supposedly the daughter is like a top-level soccer player. Sounds like she's going to college on, on soccer, right? right? Um, and then they filmed this soccer game that's like AYSO. <laughs> right. Like, no, 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 no. Co- high school seniors bound for college don't play in the neighborhood park <laughs> That's exactly what I was with thinking. moms standing on the <laughs> sidelines going, yay, go Becky. Yeah, I was like, wait, is know? this is this a flashback? Because <laughs> she's, like, she's like a senior yeah. in high school. No, see, that, but that's it. That's, that's, like, that's like when a screenwriter writes a movie about a mom and dad dealing with kids, about being parents. Who has never been a parent. Right. Right? And then real parents go to the theater and they're just like, that's cute, but 
No. But no. That's right. not how it happens. Like, you clearly know nothing about having children. Um, and this, this person knows this, nothing. <laughs> this screenwriter has a daughter in a- AYSO. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just took that experience and plopped it onto this soccer game. Like, yeah, that was so weird. And then they had this scene where there's this dad there who's like a total jerk. Yeah. He's like yelling yeah. and cussing yeah. at at the kids, and and there's like this almost confrontation at the kids between him and and Bruce Willis's character, um, all for it to end and have no significance, no purpose. It doesn't develop the. It doesn't tell us anything really. It, it was just annoying. Nothing. Yeah. The only <laughs> it just it just served to establish that uh, Bruce Willis. It wants to pick fights and has some sort of aggressive attitude. Towards but he didn't. I think it was even rest- less. He had that. restraint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It showed it, that it actually he's, illustrated you know. that he's not the type to go vigilante. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a deep-seated thing. I don't know. He's the, uh, Go ahead. The whole beginning of this movie feels so so functional. Everything <laughs> is so purposely put in its place yeah. and. Usually you'd want to like smooth out all that, you know, plot with an editor points. Yeah, with yeah. like an editor or something like that. But it's just so rigid. You can see every single detail that they're trying to convey. Yeah, you can almost watch the paragraphs just end <laughs> and then start the next scene. Where yeah. was where was he target shooting? <laughs> like a back this? alley and his garage. It was like he was you in couldn't a couldn't tell. It was like he was in a giant shipping container. <laughs> right, but they never the established it. He just yeah. had this place where it's completely dark around him, so you can't tell if he's indoors or outdoors. But there's a road sign yeah. that he's shooting at in Chicago, where cops <laughs> will show up if you fire a gun. And and where they where they spent a long time in the beginning establishing that there's too many shootings in Chicago. Yeah, and so yeah, if he's shooting in Chicago, there would be a cop on him like a, like a magnet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised at how they often... They never revealed where that was. No, they didn't. It was crazy. It was really <laughs> confusing. Um, and I, I was surprised at how much they kept going to, like, sway in the morning and the, the news channels. Oh, they, stuff. Was, like, they three overused times. that yeah. so much. And, you know, there's a few <laughs> movies that have done this well where they, they use... Um, they they use like news coverage, a news anchor, yeah. a radio show to to basically fill in exposition gaps. Yeah, right. 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 They they give the uh, perspective of the community. Mm. You know, if you need to get across that there's now community angst or excitement about something that's happening, you bring in the local news yeah. guy, and sometimes it's good, and usually it's not. Yeah, it's cliche. It was like it was so they were practically a character a character in the movie yeah, yeah. the yeah. man cow show yeah yeah man, was, that was a character <laughs> he was man a cow. character yeah. in this movie <laughs> he wasn't just a you know cut to local news guy yeah. it was like he had more lines than <laughs> he, did. he had more lines than the, <laughs> than like than the, the detective <laughs> yeah it, uh, it, it, sorry sorry I'm i was going to say sway in the morning uh, looked like they recorded the, like the whole clip that they needed to record, and then played the entire thing in the movie without editing it. <laughs> like, like his he's not an actor. Yeah, he's a talk show host, and it's very clear when he's talking that he's acting. <laughs> yeah, it was Just, weird. He's like, I don't know if I agree. They also could have had him change his clothes since each of these appearances were <laughs> supposedly day. on different days. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wore the same clothes in every clip. It was the same thing. <laughs> it, it also, the, he's, they were all saying the same thing every time they had a montage. It was always like, is the is he right for doing what he's doing, or is he wrong yeah, for doing what he's doing? Just in different words. Yeah, every single time, same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. It was so ridiculous. How, how about the fact that Bruce Willis's character goes from like being almost afraid of guns to learning on YouTube how to disassemble one, and then being like amazing at yeah. all guns suddenly he's like he's like crazy good at shooting after because he has a montage of shooting in the sign yeah but uh, i mean there's there's a certain amount of stuff that i i will forgive because it is the laws we go by in movies i mean 
how many movies that we actually love do we have where uh, somebody somebody practices, finds a guru, reads a book well, or sure. something, and then in the next scene they're pretty much as good as their enemy, right? Mm. You know, well, I mean that does, but that, that is pretty common. It's it's common. It's common when it's called for. I don't think it was called for at all in mm. this movie. Uh, just because they set up their rules. And that was another thing with the movie is that they, they made everything look so realistic. And they had to play by the rules in every single aspect. Like like the way the detectives work. You know, when when Bruce Willis was sitting down and he's explaining every cop show trope to uh, to the detective. And he's saying, well, can't you get their fingerprints? You know, what about their blood? And, and he says, he says like every cop show trope. You know, mm-hmm. why, why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? And the other guy just knocks all of them down. Like, as if the screenwriter was going, okay, well, they're going to think this, they're going <laughs> to think that, they're going to think this. So if you're going to go that detailed in something like that, I think it's stupid to have something like a short little tiny montage. Like, it wasn't even big. A tiny montage that suddenly we were to believe that this guy is an Became expert an expert marksman from YouTube. Yeah, yeah, from YouTube. And the second, the first one, he cut his hand because he wasn't holding the gun right. Yeah. The first shoot down that he did. Then the second shoot down, he's... Like freaking Clint Eastwood with how fast he shoots. Yeah. He goes, boop, 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 boop. you're the ice cream man. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's dead. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. Yeah, that, that he actually won he actually pulled out a gun and killed a guy who already had a gun. Who already had hand. a gun. Yeah. Him like, and and two other guys. That's very fast. Yeah. That's kind of absurd. It's very absurd. Um that's that moment should have been what the whole movie should have been. Yeah, exactly. So that is one of those moments, that very brief moment of him the ice shooting and killing the ice cream good. man. I was yeah. like, Yeah, that's it awesome. It was hilarious how hard a guy behind us laughed at very that hard. Moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guy, there was a guy awesome. behind us that laughed so hard. Belted it. Now, uh two episodes back we covered Black Panther and we brought up the obvious comparisons to the lion king (laughs) i could not help but notice that i was watching a movie starring bruce willis taking the law into his own hands at night wearing Wearing a hood hood, which perfectly describes unbreakable (laughs) only difference is he uses superpowers instead of a gun Right. And Unbreakable's way better. <laughs> Unbreakable's yeah. way better. But I'm just, it's funny that we're on the verge of having a sequel to Unbreakable in this coming movie. out uh, a little less than a year from now. Yeah. And this movie comes out and just feels like a knockoff Unbreakable <laughs> with the same star in it. <laughs> right. I also got a uh, Breaking Bad vibe, not just Absolutely. because it was Dean, but because... Uh, because he was investigating a reputable member of society who was secretly doing yeah. this, you know, totally illegal stuff, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Hiding in plain sight. Yep. You know, and seeing seeing that actor who plays Hank in, yeah. uh, in Breaking Bad, seeing him as the cop again, right. and seeing him missing the person he's looking for while he's right in front of him. I'm just like, did you really just cast him because the part is so similar to Breaking Bad? That's what it felt like. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's looking for Hank, and there's Hank, right? Yeah, oh, sorry, he's put- looking for Walter, <laughs> yeah. and there's there's Walter right in front of him. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, this. I think this movie would have made more sense, or at least his motives would have made more sense, had his daughter died because mm. his daughter didn't die. Is that- I, I yeah. kept wondering that, too. I'm like, dude. What are you going to do when you succeed <laughs> right. and your daughter comes out of a coma and she doesn't have a dad anymore? <laughs> right. <laughs> like in Taken, that's what was so good about it was that this guy, Liam Neeson, will go to any length to save his daughter because otherwise she will die. Yeah. And so if he dies, then it's worth it. In this case, if he dies, it's not worth it. No, it's yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's going to wake up from her coma to find out, oh, your mom's died. That's sad. What happened to dad? <laughs> he died, but it was completely unnecessary. <laughs> he went on a, a It was actually of his, own, of his own making. <laughs> yeah. You caused your mom to die. <laughs> he caused himself to die. You're really a sad family. <laughs> we, we were talking about yesterday about a film that you wanted to make, and we we're trying to this. Uh, we were trying to discuss how this character would commit an, an act. Yeah. Right? That was violent. Yeah. And 
it, it's funny. This movie had the same problem. Yeah, this movie had the same problem. <laughs> where this character... I had that thought when we were watching it. I'm like, this, this could be Taylor's problem. Th- this oh, is why you have to think about it, Taylor. Oh, geez. <laughs> this, yeah, so, so you can see how it doesn't work. This character does not have any violent tendencies whatsoever. Mm. And then suddenly goes on a shooting rampage like it's a new drug for him, which would have been interesting... Except it wasn't that. <laughs> it wasn't a new drug form. It was just he's doing it for revenge because the screenwriter says so. Was it so. just so weird to see uh, when when he first sees the coverage of his crime on the news he for smiles. the first time and he, like, has this smile on his face? He's like, hmm. I, you know? yeah. I was hoping it would get demented like, after that. Yeah. Well, it's like it's again. It's go go all in yeah. or don't go there at all. Right. Because seeing him just grin like that is like okay. So we're I guess we're going in this direction where he's going psychotic. Right. He's going to become a maniac uh, who will eventually like murder his family. You know, <laughs> right. become the thing he's trying to destroy. Unfortunately, that's not the way they went. Uh, I would have expected him to be horrified that he was caught on tape. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, especially with his kind of character. Yeah, he would. we saw him going to almost uh, uh, paranoid level of making sure he covered his tracks, right? And yet, when he that? sees that he was caught on tape, he's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh yeah," a little aroused by this. How about the fact that they used the word "memes" in here and they showed horrible Dude, of them that were yeah, terrible. Dude, memes. those memes. <laughs> <laughs> One of them said, so they talked about how the footage, uh, the footage that was caught of him. Uh, during during one of his crimes was being used to make memes and they put one up on the screen they put several on the screen but one of them had a picture of him you know shooting his gun and it said when your friends reveal Game of Thrones spoilers jeez <laughs> like that. that's so bad oh man it's just so out of touch it like, is you can't you can't do memes yeah, in movies it's I mean there's not a better word to to describe this movie than tone deaf yeah. Tone deaf is it's just it, yeah, yeah it's just, it didn't know it didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. this movie was not aware of itself. <laughs> I really yeah. wish it was more self aware because it would have been a lot more fun. Yeah. Um. So I had a thing about the uncle. Yeah. Uh. So the uncle's character, I f- I feel like after watching the movie, I feel like he was rewritten. Mm. Um. Because he he kept being in these very intimate shots with Bruce Willis's character mm-hmm. where. His were it looked like he was supposed to be somebody, like yep. and as someone of importance. I, and I kept thinking, oh, it's going to be a twist. He's going to be the bad guy. Yep, like super telecasted, but whatever. Yes. And it wasn't. Nope. And so he actually I, was very had very little importance. Yeah. to the story. And he was actually the most like the the character that was written most deeply. They kept referencing him. He had yeah. a backstory. He had a backstory. He had a flaw. Mm-hmm. You know, he kept he kept actually trying to uh, make himself better. You know, with the whole money thing. Um, so I think, I think that something had to happen between him and Bruce Willis. And I think because of the guy's actions that he at one point was, was gay or somehow was supposed to be in a relationship with Bruce Willis. I think. That's what you think was rewritten? I think that's what well, was rewritten. And, I mean. I didn't catch that. No, no. So <laughs> I'm thinking that because there's so many of these, of these shots were them two having having arguments? They, I thought they were brothers. Well, yeah, like that's, I'm thinking it was rewritten that way. Rewritten oh, you to think be they're brothers. rewritten to be brothers? Yeah, right, because that's the only other intimate thing that makes sense. You have a theory that they used to be in a relationship. Yeah, I have uh, a theory that the screenwriter wrote them as as in a relationship. Mm. Later on, filmed it. Later on, said this doesn't work. And then changed it to a brother because there were there was one sequence. That's where a crazy they, theory. Dude. That is. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> There's well, so the so the it would explain why the wife died so easily, why she had zero motivation to do anything in there, um, uh, and it would also explain why he's in here so much. The uncle has no motivation to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. There's no point for him to be there, and why he cares so much about the daughter, right? Like there's there's because no because it's for their daughter. <laughs> oh, well, the, but the ending shot had them two sitting on the couch with the daughter, and and the uncle is like rubbing her leg, like he's he's very, very, very calm now. He's now relaxed that she's back, 
you know, yeah. and there was no connection that was built that way before. That was kind of an awkward shot, too. It was. Yeah. I don't know about your gay storyline. <laughs> I like my gay storyline. I, d- it's I don't. Interesting. I don't dislike it. <laughs> I, I, I just I didn't go there, but I think you're spot on that that uncle character had definitely had a more pivotal role in this story yeah. that was taken out. Do you yeah. think he was the mastermind? Um, that was my first thing was that uh, not the mastermind. Yeah. I think that because of his tendencies to slip up and get involved in legally <coughs> questionable things, you know, kind of like uh, I actually thought he was going to be like the guy in Fargo, William H. Macy's character in Fargo, who's actually a perfectly oh, yeah. honest guy 90% of the time, <laughs> but he's in trouble, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so he, he does this thing where he's like, I'm going to pay you to rob my, you know, you're going to kidnap my wife kind of thing. Like maybe it was like, hey, uh, rob rob my brother and, uh, you know, I'll make sure that they're out of the house for his birthday. That would have been so good too. And we'll split the take, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Like that's what I was foreseeing. And they kept coming back to him as an important part of the story like they were they wanted us to get invested in their relationship yeah. so that there would so that the betrayal that was coming would have meaning right but the betrayal never came he was just there you know <laughs> he was just there <laughs> and uh then i thought i thought at the very end it uh, uh i saw another potential for them to make it all make sense and that was when they were on the verge of catching him and his brother goes to the house to intervene. And then the cops show up and he says, I'll take care of this. I'm, I'm going to go upstairs and talk to them. I thought he's going to tell them that he's the That's what I Grim thought he, Reaper. Yeah, that he's I thought he was going to take the yeah. take it and tell them he's the Grim Reaper so that his brother could go free. That made sense of them. They moment. didn't do that either. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they just – I mean, it's so obvious that he – he had something. He must have yeah. had more meaning than he, he ended up having in the end, unless they're just bad writers. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially early, early on, I felt like uh, that he was directed to act as if he was a little bit evil. Like there was some badness to him in like in his performance. It felt yeah. like th- it felt like him and MJ were connected. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, when when the valet first came and he's like, "This guy has the money," you know? right? Yeah, like if how did that? What was that even? That he that was, whole scene. I don't understand. MJ that. was the valet. Yeah, who had their cars. Yes. So he drove up with Uncle what is, what's his name's car first, but he didn't have money to pay the valet. Ah. So he said, "Oh yeah, this guy will pay for me." So he pays, and then the valet goes and gets their car. Yeah, pulls up their address on the handy computer screen and takes a picture of it. So it was just a a, a, just rogue a random guy valet who was like I'm just going to rob that's these just guys. That's just his that's just his thing. He looks for people who are rich, judges them by their cars. Yeah. And finds their address in their built-in okay. car computer. He, that, why why did he say <laughs> I think I think I think we're reaching here. But <laughs> I, I want to. I want to find meaning behind the dialogue. Why they said what they said, and I feel like I'm just gonna find nothing. He he said, "Oh, MJ, uh, are you a Jordan? Are you a Bulls, Bulls fan. fan?" And he says, "No, it's my name." Which stupid. What? <laughs> yeah, who initials their own <laughs> yeah. initials? Who, who tattoos their own initials on their arm? And then he says his name. And check it out, KB, <laughs> <laughs> like like Kenny Ballantyne, like my name. He says <laughs> his name, and, and cool it sounded. Tat. It sounded uh, uh, Arab to me, like the way he said it. Is it was I was I off on that? Because he said his name was Miguel afterwards. I didn't notice at all. Okay. Well, it sounded like he said something that was like Eastern mm. um, kind of feel to it. Mm. And then when he went into the car and looked back at Bruce Willis, then it went. Brrr, and I was like, Jesus, <laughs> that's like racist, dude. That's like super racist. But <laughs> but and then then he takes the picture. I'm like, oh, it's just it's a classic uh, East Indian guy is. Is uh yeah. he 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 was not East Indian. Well, whatever. This guy, <laughs> yeah, I'm being racist now. <laughs> this guy, oh, man, I feel like he was being on IMDb. But, it only says not. Miguel. It's just Miguel. Yeah, that whole scene was really confusing to me. It was odd. Yeah. Well, because and then even the people that he was connected to, right, didn't really make any sense because he. So he pulled up the location that he drove to, I guess, on his phone. Bruce Willis 
pulled up the location that the, on the guy's phone after he, that guy had died. And he drove to this liquor store, I guess. So he goes to the same liquor store and says that, hey, Miguel works for me. And the guy's like, oh, yeah. So I guess, so did Miguel... <laughs> did Miguel tell all these guys, hey, this guy's loaded, <laughs> let's go rob him, then come back and keep it for ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not worth it, D. Stop it. It's not worth it. You're putting yourself through trauma here. Why do they have... This is post-traumatic stress. Why There's do they no have so many deep. objects in the back of their place? Do they rob just lots sitting of there. Do they... <laughs> they sell... They have their store. They have an online store. <laughs> <laughs> they, they flip it on eBay. It's eBay. The eBay uh, robbers. Um, like we're running low on uh, stock so for video games. I got to go rob a house. About, so two things, two things that involve uh, the Hank character. What is that actor's name? Dean, Dean Norris. Yeah, always plays a detective. Yeah. Oh, he always plays law enforcement. I like the guy. By the way, he's, he's great. great. Yeah, I like him. Great. I do like yeah. him. Uh, he's great in Breaking Bad. He was the best thing about this uh, show called The Dome. Or oh something? yeah, I saw a few episodes of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was great. Bad show, but bad show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he was great. He he's good. Um, but but two things about him. Three really. First is that they spent the whole movie building up for one corny joke. <laughs> <laughs> first, they, first, they, first they show him eating a oh diet bar, right? Yeah. That tastes, and he no. and he can't even swallow it. He spits it out and goes and drinks Stop. water. And then then later his partner's teasing him about about getting donuts and he's like, "Oh, I'm so hungry." <laughs> also that at the very end when the crime is seemingly all wrapped up, his partner says, "Well, you satisfied?" And then he, and then he looks at a pizza on the table and picks it up and goes, "No." Now I'm satisfied. Stop. It was so Stop bad, it. and they it's they built up for that joke through the whole yeah, the awesome. entire film. That 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 whole storyline about him dieting had no other purpose okay. than to deliver that one joke. <laughs> other than just the absurdity and the stupidness of the joke, that gluten free is not dieting, right? Gluten free. Well, no, that could be an allergy. Gluten free is for allergies. There are a lot of reasons why. So why is he why is he avoiding gluten? Uh, did that is that what they said? No. So he picks up the bar and the bar says gluten free on the top, and then when they go to the car like thirty minutes later in the film, the girl randomly says, "Ah, oh, but you want a bear claw or a donut?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> well, uh, well, just depends on what if he's on like Atkins diet. You know, uh, you wouldn't eat any any grains, so a gluten free bar would be. It would make a lot He's more paleo. sense. He's paleo. It it make a lot more sense if they focused on something that said something like fat free, fat free. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, I'm it's telling you the screenwriter just had screenwriter no, didn't even know what gluten had no was. experience with anything. He didn't know soccer <laughs> and he doesn't know dieting. But here's here's the next thing with with uh, we'll call him Hank. Uh, Hank <laughs> <laughs> at at the end. What I thought was the probably the most preposterous thing of this whole film is it's now painfully obvious that that Bruce Willis's character is the Grim Reaper. <laughs> he knows it, right? And he's and he basically says like wink wink, I know who you are, but I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's not a law enforcement <laughs> This would never happen. <laughs> well, especially that kind of character also. Uh, uh, not just that, like, I, what detective wouldn't, especially in their s- position, wouldn't kill to be the guy who locked up the Grim Reaper? Right. Like, I'm the one who caught the Grim Reaper. And he was even given shit the whole time from his boss. Yeah, he mm-hmm. could have brought him in in cuffs and been like, yeah, we've put vigilante... <laughs> Law in its place, you know. Which at least would have been But he like gives him this wink, wink, like I get you, <laughs> you know. We're gonna let this slide. And I'm like that doesn't make any sense at all. I find that highly <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> but, uh, I, I actually, I had a little bit of a different interpretation of that scene, but my interpretation actually makes the movie a lot worse than <laughs> oh, that. Even no, oh, god. 
what I I saw that scene and I was like, to me it seemed like it was the writer trying like like yeah he Hank knew, but I think the writer was trying to set it up so that in the court of law he would not be he it it uh, covers up all of his tracks and everything that he any bit of evidence leading to him being the Grim Reaper was explained by his quick lines about, oh, I got these guns to stay, and this is this cut from this then. Even though I think, like, it's to me it seemed like Hank gave up because he's like, oh, well, there's no, we have no evidence now. <laughs> well, <laughs> crap. Dang. <laughs> he's like, and what about a Glock? Did you have a Glock? And he's like, I used to. I used to. Don't have it anymore. On goes, for good. <laughs> my, my hands are tied. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it seemed like to me. <laughs> there's, there's, uh... Oh, shoot. I, I just had it. I don't remember it now. Well, one thing they actually got right in that scene no. is that <laughs> um, when he says, well, it looks like you're just a, a man defending his family, um, self-defense shootings are not decided in a court. They're not decided by a judge. It's decided by the law enforcement officer on site. Mm. They get to actually say, oh, yeah, that was self-defense. And it never gets reviewed beyond that. Um, it's actually a piece of piece of the fabric of American justice that's very uh, loose. loose. Interesting. Yeah, and so you get a lot of scenarios where it's like, oh, I don't think that was self-defense. Oh no, that time it was. Um, so that actually was accurate. You you could blow someone away with a hidden machine gun under your coffee table, and if <laughs> they're tactical, to the if if the officer. If the officer's inclined to think that was okay, then you could get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, oh, it was the identifier for the Grim Reaper. That's what I've had a problem with. Um, so when he he would put on his hood, <laughs> he'd wear a hoodie, and that was his thing. The Grim Reaper wore wore a hoodie, and then we found out that there were real life implications of or not implications. What do you call it? Was it when, when you imitators? Get consequences. There's oh. there's real life consequences to this, and that's you get imitators who do the same thing and they get yeah. shot. And I'm like, how stupid of a thing is that to have the hoodie as an identifier so that anybody who's wearing a hoodie now <laughs> can get shot? It's a pretty generic item. It's a pretty generic thing. And I was yeah. like, that's just kind of reckless. I also thought, why did the police immediately know that this was a copycat and not the actual guy? <laughs> the actual guy? <laughs> don't know like if i if i'm bruce willis i'm calling the cops and saying you got him that, right that is That's the him. grim reaper <laughs> nicely done I case closed <laughs> the grim the real grim reaper has a style yeah. <laughs> a signature except he didn't yeah <laughs> I, I like yeah, also sloppy. they how campy they went with like the gun store yeah which i loved that I was the best yeah, part of the cool. movie. Yeah. yeah. So like when they had the little story. ad or the YouTube video or whatever. That was funny. It was like super weird. And then <laughs> like everyone in the theater laughed when the, we saw the tactical piece of furniture. Yeah. Where the popped yeah. out. Surprise, bad yeah. guys. And then he actually did it in the yeah. film. That was awesome. I was like, that's hilarious. Yeah. If only the whole film was like that. Yeah. <laughs> I also, Why did that moment have like no impact? Like There it, was zero buildup for it. And like, there was zero. like the bad guy standing there again, already has a gun in his hands right. and can't shoot Bruce Willis <laughs> before he pulls a freaking machine gun out of a coffee table. Uh, never and he mind. has to make a speech, too, after he shoots him once. Never mind that. <laughs> but uh, um, but he just, he just blows him away, and it was something about the timing. I, I don't know why, but it didn't seem like a climax. There wasn't enough gore. No. <laughs> More gore. No, okay, so Al one thing gore. that made me super uncomfortable <laughs> was the the guy underneath the, the car mechanic. Yeah, I, so, I really liked that scene. So it was an interesting scene yeah. had the rest of the movie been that way. Right, yeah. But since it wasn't, it felt excessive. Mm. So it felt like this family man who doesn't really want to do what he's doing torturing is torturing this guy yeah. way beyond what he needs to be. And then the guy says, you won't kill me. Yeah, like, like he, why? Why not? Okay, crushes he just, his head he under a car and then crushes him, and I'm like, Jesus! Like, like I don't like Bruce Willis at all. <laughs> He's a bad person. <laughs> That's terrible. That's what I wanted from the movie. I wanted a lot more scenes like that where you see people's heads explode, right. and like when so, people get shot, like it just a profuse <laughs> but blood like, everywhere. But like, 
uh, Django, for example, yeah. right? When Django shoots up a bunch of people, you don't feel bad at all because because they've built up this world where he can do that, and he's he's the lesser of the two evils. Yeah. In this instance, he's <laughs> Bruce Willis is actually the greater of the two evils. Oh yeah. And it doesn't make sense. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> like yeah. you're telling. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. I actually liked that scene because. He was using his knowledge as a doctor. That was cool. Instead of being yeah, like this that. expert with a gun, which makes no sense. Right. He was being an expert with a scalpel, which yeah. does make sense. Yeah. Um, it was also the only scene that matched with the expectation of going to an Eli Roth movie, I thought. Agreed. Um, and the spoiler of in the trailer. However, <laughs> yeah. wasn't the trailer. he did not expose the uh, uh, sciatic nerve. That was preposterous. They show him make an incision on his thigh, and then that's it. Like, just sort of, like, poke around with a wound, and he's like, this is your sciatic nerve, which is, like, buried deep into your muscle. It would have to be, like, a crazy (laughs) surgery. Like, we should have seen him, like, pulling out a hose sort of thing. It's this big nerve in your body. Like, him claiming that he was pouring (laughs) brake fluid on his sciatic nerve. I'm just, just saying I... If you have a little bit of familiarity with human anatomy, that's oh. ridiculous. We'll add that to the list of the screenwriter had no idea what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there was soccer. There's basic people. There's uh, bad guys, too. Bad guys. I was expecting to see that guy's face all scarred from from the hot water. Yeah, he had the little cut. He had, he had his little, little cut scar. <laughs> I like how he goes. He gets cut by the knife. And he pulls off his mask, and he's like, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then, then, then one of the guys says, she's like, seen your face. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, this was. These are bad. Now they got to die. Bad this criminals. Bad criminals and bad writing. <laughs> uh, how about the scene in the elevator where the, the, <laughs> the mastermind of the whole thing gets in the elevator with them and has, like, a creepy pep talk? Where I was really yeah, was hoping awkward. it was going to turn into something, but it said it was just the girl feeling uncomfortable. Without her dad stepping in, like he always does. Yeah. Well, I don't think but for he some knew. reason didn't this time. I don't think he knew that was him. He, but he did afterwards. It seems like he did. Yeah, he says his name even. He did. He He's did like afterwards. This, so he no. just decided. It's as if he forgot and yeah. then went out and then he remembered. <laughs> like, Wait. You did this to me. <laughs> oh. It's like he's in an elevator with the man. Yeah. And nothing happened. No, it feels like it's supposed to be that kind of scene where you're like really tense, like something's going to happen. It was not tense it at all. Tense. It was just, just creep- kind of creepy. It was just weird. Because that guy was total sleaze. Right. You know, I think um, – I actually think the marketing for this movie pretty much ruins the entire movie. Like one trailer shows what the film is about, which is like – oh, my wife dies, my daughter's in a coma, now I'm taking law into my own hands. And that's what the entire film builds up to, but you already know that's what's going to happen. So right. it becomes nothing, yeah. you know, and it doesn't really pay off anything. We could have been a half an hour late to the movie, and it might have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we yeah. could have. Yeah. They, they did this weird thing in uh, that screenwriters, that new screenwriters, I feel like, do, where in order to motivate the entire movie – the whole thing that happens, they have to set up, you know, understanding and like build characters and be like, okay, well, you should feel for these people before they die so we can, you know, take the rug underneath you. But that whole setting up of the family didn't make any sense because cause no one didn't, we didn't understand why anything was anything. The Everyone was just nice. The daughter didn't have any flaws. The wife didn't have any flaws. <laughs> That's true. Like it almost, it almost like depressed me a little seeing how wonderful their life how was. How perfect was it was! Like, jeez. <laughs> like you kind of want them to die. <laughs> <laughs> These guys need to be taken down a step. <laughs> He's like complaining about his Rolex being slow. <laughs> well, especially knowing <laughs> rough life, man. Rough. You know they're they're gonna die. <laughs> the whole time you know that they're and gonna die. And you know die. they're gonna die too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that, it just feels like they're just, like, flaunting all this stuff at you. It makes it even more transparent is what it does. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Bruce Willis tried. You got to sure. give him that. He tried. There he were a few really scenes well. where he really put his all into it. Yeah. The the bit in the basement where his, he's confronted by his brother. <laughs> Which was, like, real. 
like robotic. I felt like. Well, no, I felt like he got super emotional when he did. He, he did when he gives him the like, like who else is gonna do this? You yeah. know, it's got to be me kind of thing. Yeah. I was like, dude, it felt robotic because just before that he was a completely different person. Yeah, and then he comes <laughs> in here, and then now he's suddenly angry and like sad, and it's funny. Yeah, and they also had a, this thing. It, there's there's rules in in storytelling, right? There's rules that matter, and when you break those rules, it has to be to for the for a, the purpose of breaking the rule, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you only break the rule to show, look, I did something different. Um, but one of those rules is is like if you set if you set a law, and then the law gets broken, there's a consequence. And in in the final sequence of the movie. He sticks his daughter in this little cubby under the stairs and scoots a dresser against it and says, under no circumstances do you come out of this. And then she's, you know, after she hears all this commotion, it's making her cry and scream. And he, he walks by and says, I'm still okay. Don't worry. Stay in there. Second time he said it. Then he's down in the basement. He gets shot and he's, she knows it and she's screaming. And he yells up, stay where you are. And then she comes out. And, and there's he, no consequence. He blows the guy away. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, but we see her defy the, the demand, the three-time demand to yeah. stay in there. She comes out. She goes against that, which means either she should have to pay for, for coming out. She gets hurt or something like that. She messes up the plan. Or... Because she had the bravery to come out, she saves dad or right. something like that, right. Right? right? But instead, the law was broken without any yeah, no reason, reason to break the law. Without any reason. Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's what the whole screenplay was. The whole was. movie was yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just Things that were set up and never delivered. Never delivered. Yeah. 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 These were pizzas that were put in the oven, but no one turned it on. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they got out the crust. They put on the, the sauce and the cheese. Not the expensive stuff. This is like the, the Costco brand on a frozen pizza crust. But they made it. They put it in the oven, but they never turned the thing on. Mm. They never turned it on. It just sat in that oven cold. Uncooked pizza. Can you imagine eating that? It sounds terrible. Just dough. Just dough and, and sauce. sauce and dough and gross. Cheese. You're just like, what is it's this? It's cold. And other people are like, that's pizza. And you're like, this <laughs> yeah, is exactly. not pizza. Exactly. People are telling you this is a pizza. <laughs> the you, pizza is telling you it's a fact, pizza. In fact, you even paid for pizza. <laughs> and, and you this start is eating it. Given. That's the problem with this movie. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> That's exactly what this is. This movie's an uncooked pizza. And if you watched the movie, then you ate the you uncooked ate pizza. You ate the uncooked pizza. Yeah, Which is why we all get, walked out just kind of like, going like, like oh, so I'm really not hungry anymore, <laughs> but I would like to eat something else. And you have to tell it to somebody. Yeah. yeah. You really want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> this was a gross pizza. It wasn't even cooked. <laughs> of... Oddly enough, most of our screenings we go to, we always go on a Friday and we go in the morning. Uh, so it's matinees. <laughs> Typically, they're the, the first showing, too. Yeah, first showing of the first day. Showing. Usually it's us and like five other people yeah. in the movie theater. And this place was packed. Yeah. It was packed. It was full. People came there out was to people, see this movie. There were people in the, like we had to get second row behind yeah, the screen. Yeah, we were close to the screen. And there was people there <laughs> in the B row. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. And well, people were having a good time watching the movie, <laughs> laughing, having fun. <laughs> well, they were laughing and having fun. Probably not for the reasons uh, uh, Eli Roth would want. Maybe not. If, yeah, if people know. like uncooked pizza, that's fine. <laughs> you can like uncooked pizza if you want. <laughs> sure. I, I prefer I prefer cooked pizza. I agree. I expect cooked pizza. <laughs> You prefer good pizza, you know? That's the problem here. Like, it, at least if it's I, cooked. If I leave a movie and it was just the equivalent of a cooked pizza, I go, eh, it wasn't that good, right? Yeah. It's just another movie. It's another, just another pizza. What you want is like an exceptional piece of freaking pizza. I think this wasn't even, this wasn't even cooked. cooked. <laughs> <laughs> there is an oven somewhere. It's unplugged. It's disconnected from the gas. You, just, you know what it was actually? <laughs> the the pizza was not 
cooked and the cook took it out of the oven an un um, preheated oven because it's uncooked yeah then he took it out and then he took a blowtorch and he just did he burnt one spot he just burnt one he spot he just focused all the heat into one place yeah and you Which, say, that that part was pretty good yeah but the rest of it and that scene that or the sorry not the scene the the piece that was burnt by the blowtorch was the uh the uh, car scene where right. the dude gets his head blown yeah, like up. could the whole pizza be like that please <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gone too far the analogy of I think it's broken. This is great. It's a good analogy. It is. Yeah, it is yeah, quite good. It works. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've about run out of things to say about the Death Wish. Other than I, I'll give it one positive thing. Here's my positive thing to say about Death Wish. It has the perfect name. <laughs> this movie has the perfect <laughs> title. <laughs> because you wish to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you watch this movie, or you wish the movie dies, you wish the main character dies. <laughs> Someone's got to die. Death, <laughs> you're wishing for death. Yeah, there are death wishes <laughs> happening throughout this movie, so it is aptly named. Uh, not really worth your time or money, in my humble opinion. Uh, I can't recommend you watch this at all. I think it's actually very good for script study. If you wanted oh. to know what not to write, um, this is a really good script to study and show how it's not, it doesn't deliver. Our condolences to the screenwriter of this <laughs> film. That's about the worst insult you could ever be given. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, again, I, I also would not recommend it. Um, I did really enjoy the cumulative 45 seconds that was delivered that met my expectations but the rest of the hour and 49 minutes were just not interesting and kind of boring, yeah, actually. A lot of it was boring. Yeah. So don't see uh, it. Hey, there was a ricochet moment. You know when he when he shot at the sign and the bullet ricocheted and he was like, oh. And so he's like, you shouldn't shoot there. And then he continues. <laughs> <laughs> It also looked like he got shot there too, because like you could see the it bounced behind him. There was a reflection before he dodged out of the way, so he technically should be dead. Actually, there you go. Why are we still talking about this movie? I tried. Have to you guys wrap seen it Bright? I tried, let's talk about Bright. I tried to wrap it up. Come on, let's 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 land the and plane. And there was that here. one thing I actually liked the ending quite a bit of Bright of Death Wish. <laughs> <laughs> but that adds about four seconds. I actually my really enjoyed when this movie seconds. ended. That was nice. Do right. you, you enjoy when it ended? Yeah, so I could get up. How about that? The most cringe-worthy moment of the trailer was, in fact, the last shot of the film, and that's when he does his finger gun. Yeah, at where he shoots at a kid. Yeah, who's who's trying to steal a purse or yeah. something? He's like, Haha. he's like, Death, hey, murder. Am I right? <laughs> See, I I like that actually. Again, that's part of the four seconds in my forty-five seconds. I You're entitled liked. to that. You can like stupid things. Yeah. <laughs> frozen pepperonis, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You can go chew on frozen meats if you like. I like frozen pepperonis actually. <laughs> <laughs> but cold pepperoni is really good. Uh huh. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, I hope that listening or watching this episode of Talkies wasn't nearly as painful as it was to sit through Death Wish. Uh, you can find more from the three of us at Carmen Line Studios on YouTube. Please check us out and subscribe. We yeah, have yes, a lot sir. of really cool content coming up every single week. Yeah. And uh, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the usual suspects. Find us, like, subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what are we covering next week? Uh, is it a wrinkle in time yet? Oh, Thoroughbreds. Is that next week? Really? I think so. Thoroughbreds and wrinkle time are the same week. Oh. Yes. Well, let me just peek while I'm on yes. the internet. Next week is Thoroughbreds and a wrinkle in time. Lit T, lit T, lit T. So we're going to do a double <laughs> episode or two episodes. Yeah, so first time that we do double feature. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Two um, hour episode. I'm extremely <laughs> excited about one of those movies and mildly intrigued by another one. So we'll see how that goes. Same here. All right, guys. It's been fun. But until next time, I'm Kenny. I'm D. 
I'm Taylor. And we will see you at the Takis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ding, ding. My arm is You ought to be in pictures. <laughs> You're wonderful to see. <laughs> you are to be in pictures. Oh, what a hit you will be. Your voice would thrill a nation. Your face would be adored.